Hello everybody, it is Mike Levin on Thursday, July 28th, 2022. And on my last video, a fairly epic one, I went through setting up a whole new instance of a Linux container under LXD, under the Windows subsystem for Linux, under System D, and uh, adding a service and enabling it. I actually went the distance in the last little bit of this video, which you can play at the end of the my most recent blog post you'll see that I actually got to the point where I'm running the service it might even be shown in the screenshot here I don't know it's scrolled over a little bit too far but we'll reproduce that as quickly as possible just right now with a brand new Linux container so I'm gonna see how fast I can actually do that I took notes over there in that blog post so I can refer back to that. I'm going to go smaller on my font so that when I do LXCLS it all shows, oh I was one too large, there we go. So I've got two containers right now, one which is actually running and I had something that kept my laptop from going to sleep running since yesterday when I made this. So we should actually be able to go into that container and again that's the LXC command that lets us do that and then it's executing a command and the command that we execute is uh, oh it's for a particular platform so there is our the name of our container and uh, double minus is how we delineate the commands and the command is going to be switch user and that user is going to log in as user Ubuntu so watch my prompt here. I'm currently Helis at Lundervond. Now I'm Ubuntu at Quadling. The color coding isn't there, but that's because this thing I set up yesterday, I never put that bash file in place, so there's not the neat color coding here. Nor does there need to be at this point. I'm not putting all the polish on this. This is just assuring myself I have the ability to do what I need to do. So first we're going to go directly into cd slash tm. Well, I don't even need to go there. I'm going to, why not vim it? vim slash tmp slash pulse. This is the file that is sent as an output and it brings us to the top. You can see this is when we started it at around what was midnight general mean time. So there's like a five hour offset. And then we scroll down and this should take us right down to about now. We're in hour 18 hour 19 and it was uh, one time the code was you know writing out to the file for every half hour so you can see from the time I started to run it when the hour was zero zero there's a pair of them there there's a pair of one ones there's a pair of two twos there's no pair of uh, there's no three three or four four so I that was before I ran caffeine and once my machine was kept alive from something else I needed to do later that day I forgot to exit out of caffeine so you can see straight around the clock right up to right now it was doing a pulse every half hour so you can see if you wanted to run something server like on your laptop even when it seemed to be asleep um, you can do it by just keeping it from going to sleep even when you close the lid there's software that lets you do that so that was the pulse that was looking at the pulse itself as a reminder, we can CD, well, again, we don't even need to do it because we know exactly where it is. We can vim uh, tilde forward slash github slash pulse slash pulse.py. The file that's doing that is right here. That's all there is to it. You see that? That's all it takes to create something that writes out a heartbeat. You import uh, a sleep command, you import a date time command, and then uh, you do a, a loop that keeps it there forever. It's never escaping that. So that's what makes it appropriate as a service, right? While true. So as long as true is true, true is true is true is true is true, this will keep just running and running forever. But you don't want to create a really busy loop, so you use the sleep command. It sleeps, you know, for half an hour. And then once it's done sleeping, it can do another loop and it just keeps doing that. That is a service. It's a heartbeat pulse service, you see. So we'll quit out of that. And um, let's see, what do we want to do now? Clear. 
And I could probably find it in my command line history, but I'm going to just do it here. I'll just create a brand new machine. And uh, this is all the stuff that was for setting up the host machine. We don't need any of that really anymore. And this is setting up inside a new instance. These are setting up drives. I didn't need to do any of that stuff. This To create this heartbeat thing, it's not one of my real uh, dev machines. So I believe it was uh, launch, LXC space launch. There's an image, right? That's how we create a new image. So I just created a quadling. I'll do munchkin land. I guess it's fine. C, uh, exit clear lx c space ls the command we just picked up munchkin land i guess munchkin land all right i'll just call it munchkin because there's quadling munchkin gillikin and so on So again, we can look at that with an LX LS. So now there's one more um, container and it's running. Look, there's no IP for it. So this is very curious. See how this is bound to ETH zero? It's probably using a bridge as opposed to a NAT, which would explain a lot uh, of its um, behavior. Uh, that I was finding things working here as if it were on the host machines network and that explains a lot I do believe this is doing just a bridge by default instead of a, uh, a NAT which is fine which is good but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to LXC stop munchkin and also LXC stop quadling LXLS should show them all three stopped and then when I start munchkin it should have an IP and there it is munchkin running with an IP so now I can uh, log into that I'll do a clear and then I'll bring that back so again it's a, a clear look now that we've got three different containers one of them's running and one of them is a, yeah, I guess using the host machines uh, resources like its uh, Ethernet card to do internet stuff and uh, we can get into that machine now with LXC execute a command on machine munchkin delineate command switch user login as user Ubuntu which is the default. And there we are, Ubuntu at Munchkin. And as usual, uh, sudo apt update. And as is almost always the case when cloning off of, I call it cloning, but whatever that command was that launched it, launched it. Whenever you launch a new um, LXD image, it seems to always be up to date that sudo apt update which you so compulsively do after a Ubuntu or Debian install is seems to hardly be needed here so at any rate we're inside that machine and we can uh, confirm that uh, system D is running so I'll do a clear and we remind ourselves that the PS command shows the running processes we can send the PS command at the ID and even though it doesn't belong to this current user right because the init process doesn't belong to the current user but we still have the ability to look at information about it so when we do uh, that it will tell us we have a command sbin slash init so the question is whether that's system D or not and it just so happens to be there's a column in here that has some other version of the name and we can reach to that by going PS 
Uh, well, first I'm going to do, just because I know I'm going to need it, no headers. Okay, so I could use that. Oh, it doesn't work on its own like that. It needs something that's going to produce headers. So, header. so we're going to do the formatting command, and we're going to ask for the command, the um, column named COMM, and we're going to once again ask for task one. Oh, let's see. Do I have an extra D in there? I do. I do. I just misspelled headers with two Ds. So there is system D. And uh, we know that it's a system D system now. Again, that's this command that lets you see that. And knowing it's a system D system, we can go to the location CD uh, forward slash. ETC slash system D slash system LS. Here are the services that are in there LS hyphen LA to give you a better look at the kinds of things that they are. They're mostly directories, so all these dot wants are directories with stuff inside. I'll investigate those at some time. And most of the things that are dot services, which is not a lot of them, network D and resolve D, are both actually links. The original files are located in this other location here, this other path. And they just dropped a link into here so that these would be active services. That's a pretty clever way to do it. So you keep your services, the text file of your actual services in other locations so that you could link them into whatever magic locations you need to. But we happen to be in one of these magic locations, so we're going to look at one of these services that's actually running. We're going to look at uh, one of these so that we can see what a service file looks like. Vim that. And even if we can't change it, we can actually look at it and see what goes into one of these. This is a pretty big one. It's a much bigger one than the uh, bare bones one that I provide on my website. We could uh, look at different ones here. But I know that just because um, I did this yesterday, uh, I should really use close to the very file I used yesterday. And, and I got it from... Oh, I wish I put that in this post. It's not in this post, but it's from another post on my blogs. So I bring up another tab with my blog. And I look down. It's uh, going to be the ones somewhere around here. Yeah, there it is. Here's an example of one of these types of files. So I just copy this and check this out. This is the magic. This is what all this is about, right? So you saw me create this, uh, you know, I want to say virtual machine, but it's not. You saw me create this container in front of you, right? This is a brand new instance of a Linux machine uh, called Munchkin that's running on my laptop. This is local here. This is not cloud technology. And this is all under standard, def you know, nearly default Windows 10. There's just a few light things sprinkled in to make this possible. Distro D is one of the third party uh, things to make the Linux host part of this have system D to allow LXD itself to install through the Debian package manager. But there's a number of sub stories that were possible to get to this point that are a little bit annoying, but they're gonna clear up soon enough. So we're gonna vim in this location, but we're going to sudo vim, and we are going to call this pulse.service. I hit I for insert, I paste up, oh, I had already highlighted that over there, so that messed up what was in my copy buffer, I'll get that back. And I'll paste that here. So I learned yesterday that this type equals forking was for this longer uh, format I was using uh, that called for the screen program. We're taking that out of there for now. And I'll copy paste this as my good starting example. Uh, these paths are all correct, but I, I changed this to Python 3.10 just in case the path wasn't set right. And this is no longer heartbeat, this is pulse. 
And same with down, uh, down here. That's not heartbeat there. It's pulse. All right. And that checks that it's running every five seconds. But once it starts running, because of that while wait equals true, it's never not going to be running as user, as group, Ubuntu. This all looks really good. I just need to do the standard. It might be standard. It might be normal. I forget what the nomenclature is. And so what this is is a system D, and that field is uh, type, system D, type, types. Simple. So there they are. Simple EXEC forking one shot D bus notify or idle. So I know from my experimenting from yesterday, I want type simple. And now I uh, I save this. Whoops. See there, I saved it. And because I have sys admin privilege. Uh, by doing it with sudo, I uh, actually did save it. So that file is actually there in that location. If I ls now, you will see my uh, freshly created pulse.service. But the file being there does not necessarily mean it's running. In fact, it's not running until you explicitly tell it to run. So that you do with we're using system D, right? So it should be uh, easy enough to remember it's system CTL. It's you're controlling the system. So the system of Damien's is something that you can control. So this system CTL is the master command to uh, interact with services. So the command goes next, enable uh, pulse Dot service. Although before I actually enable it, I guess it would be good to have a before and after. So I'll pull that into my copy buffer and just show you that if you just type, let's see, system CTL, you will get this nice interactive interface of everything that's running on your system. I'll control minus to get it into sight. And as you scroll up and down, you will find that there is nothing called pulse on this list. There's not that many things on here as a fresh image creation. This is about the standard amount of services that are available. See, a lot of them are, you know, um, well, these are all the active ones. I guess it's these are showing it's showing everything that's active. Oops. I guess you can really jump around in there. Summary of less commands. Oh, I went into lesses. So it just puts it into less, that interface uh, when you do a uh, system CTL is actually the output of this being automatically pumped to less. That's a very nice convenience. Anywho, that's your before. And so I paste what's in the copy buffer, system CTL enable pulse.service, hit enter. Oh, and it gives me an error. I should have remembered from yesterday. We want to sudo that. Bam! It says it created a link from where it, you know, uh, to this location from where that file is that we just created. So creating that sim link is apparently what's required to enable it. After you enable it, you need to actually start the service. So it might be there, but not enabled. In fact, let's do system CTL just on its own again to see if we can identify the word pulse here. There's probably some way to filter it, but knowing that you can just type uh, system CTL on its own is very useful because it brings this up. Now I am not seeing it's not jumping out at me the word pulse here. So Let's try starting it. Clear. I'll make uh, the font bigger for a dramatic moment here. System CTL space start pulse. Oh, yeah, sudo. I keep forgetting, don't I? There, okay. It didn't complain. So now uh, pulse 
should be running as a service, although it's going to be creating an error because the file it's pointing to is not there. I wonder if it could still run. Let's do systemctl. There's pulse right there. So it's activating, it's stuck in activating. So it might not actually be able to activate, I would imagine. So it's gonna be stuck in that auto restart loop of attempting to restart every so often. So let's stop that service. So hopefully it shouldn't be trying to activate anymore when we bring it up here. I scroll down, let's see if it even lists when it's uh, turned off. Yeah, when it's not trying to load, it doesn't uh, list there. So anyway, I guess this is just the active ones or the ones that are trying to activate. Okay, but I do know that as I uh, sudo vim pulse, I can lift the command it's actually trying to execute, try and execute and nod to myself and go, oh yeah, of course that's not gonna work because we haven't done that work yet. But that'll only take a moment to really do that work, right? So there's no such thing as a Python 3.10 directory. So let's get some of these things done that I had documented here from about, oh yeah, this point. <laughs> I should probably just script all this, but we'll do it one at a time. It's not the biggest idea uh, deal in the world. We don't need to do that step because we did that recently sudo apt install git so you'll see that git is not actually there yet so we do sudo apt install git yes and this is a surprisingly big install git has a surprising number of dependencies uh, that need to be installed and so this is the first bit of bloat that's kind of getting done to your system uh, before this these images for the containers are fairly svelte, very thin, lightweight. They don't even put Git on the machine. I mean, you think about that, right? Linux, Python, Vim, and Git. The only thing that's default with, with Linux is Linux. You gotta get Python. You gotta get Vim. No, maybe not. Vim might be there. That'll be interesting to test in a moment. but you clearly have to get Git, which is what I'm doing right here. It's happening a little faster than yesterday's video. That makes me happy. Boy, that took forever in yesterday's video. But you have to sometimes power your way through these things. So now we have Git. There's your before and after there. Vim, yeah, Vim's on the machine. Vim's always there. Let that be a lesson to you. Uh, Python, so we gotta get Python. The next things are gonna surely be about that. There's this one for some of these uh, software properties common. I believe I even looked that up uh, the other day for the longer version of the video. The other day, that was just yesterday. So we'll do a clear, we'll paste that. sudo apt install software hyphen properties hyphen common. Yes. So this is installing all this GNU stuff. So this probably is the stuff that's required to build GNU software from source. That used to be required all the time on your Linux systems for installing new stuff because a lot of the components of what you installed from these repositories was building it from source, compiling it in C for your machine to create a binary special for you on your machine. Ever since you know, these common virtual machine-like platforms that are baked into compilers, you've been able to make these uh, executables that will just run on um, anything that advertises itself as x86 compatible or whatever uh, the API is. And that makes binaries able to be distributed with pip install. Pip install uses the wheel system that has a binary for x86. It has a binary for 64-bit ARM uh, PC, 64-bit ARM Macintosh, you know, etc. So we just um, added some common compiling components. Now we add 
to our list of repository, this Dead Snake Society. So today's step has something to do uh, with some dead snakes. Press enter to actually do what you're asking to do. Yes, okay. And there's a pseudo apt update that just occurred to make sure that it had the latest uh, Python, I mean the latest uh, local uh, Debian repository. Ubuntu technically, Ubuntu repository. This step is sudo apt install Python 3.10. This is installing Python. So these templates, these blanks or generic images uh, under the LXD system that you get from the Ubuntu image server, I believe, uh, don't have Python installed. I didn't do it before, but if I were to do it now, let's make the font bigger. If I were to type Python, it will not work. I know that from last time because of uh, environment variables not being set or whatever, or aliases not being set. Yeah, either one might do. But anyway, Python 3.10 does work. There's your Python. Print hello. Hello. Exit. Bam. So we've confirmed that Python has been installed as we had intended here. Now we're going to create a, well, we're going to pip install the virtual environment system or the new more official one, which is VENV. -E -E There's some, you know, I guess a uh, question as to whether you're using VENV -V -V or virtual ENV. All the examples and stuff out there, you're going to find use that alter virtual ENV, but I don't find it necessary. I find that, uh, well, I guess I need to sudo that. 3.10. Oh yeah, it's trying to create it in this location. So what I really want to do is uh, tilde forward slash. That'll create it relative to my home directory, not inside the system D location. That was silly of me to try. Glad I captured it. Anywho, uh, now we have the virtual ENV. So if we, well, I want to make sure I didn't create any directories here called Python 3.10. No, I did not. So now I CD tilde home. I do an LS there. And there's my Py 3.10 uh, command. So now that thing that's all the way back in my command line history where I tried to execute the line that's in the service that's right there. I'll do a clear and do that one more time so that you can see it's now complaining not about Python 3.10 not being able to be found but about the github pulse slash pulse py file not being able to be found. So we will mkdir github cd github mkdir pulse vim pulse.py from date time import date time from date import sleep no from time import sleep yeah I have that right while True. Yeah, well, true. Yeah, I have it right. Don't doubt yourself. Nope, I had it right again the first time. Open forward slash TMP forward slash pulse.txt. Open that in append mode as file handle colon file handle dot write date time dot now. But that is a um, data type uh, that's not ready for writing before converting it to say a string. This is a really old school way of making this expression, 
but at least I know I can append it to a backslash n, which is a uh, line return. All right, so that's probably pretty much it, except for the sleep, so this doesn't fill that file up right away. And that's in seconds. So I'll do that sleep every five seconds, so our test is real easy, right? And so that is a pulse right there. That is writing a service. I wrote a service, right? It's in location, uh, so maybe I can start that service now. Again, that's somewhere in my history, but I should do it from scratch just to get in the good habits instead of scrolling through this incredibly long now command line history. I won't even find it, will I? System CTL, I'm getting close. There it is, sudo system CTL start pulse. Let's see, it did not complain. See that, it did not complain. Now let's just type system CTL on its own and see if the word pulse is there. There it is. Which direction? Okay, it's right above my uh, cursor down there. Pulse.service, it's activating. It doesn't say it's active yet, so maybe I should have tested this under Python before I tried to start the service. I'll stop it just in case it's caught in some sort of can't execute loop, clear. And now I will once again find that command that is the same long path as in um, the service and see if I can run that. Ah, no such file or directory. I still have something wrong. What do I have wrong? So this, I believe, is correct. We will test that to see if that brings up the Python, what did I do wrong there? That should bring up the actual command line, which it does. The, the interactive interpreter, I don't know what you want to call it. But then the other side of this command is, is this. I guess I need to give it a command. Ah, look at that. It, it comes up like it's not really there. So let me try getting, uh, I'll see. yeah, so I chop off the file, and then I simply cd to there. Oh, yeah, okay, not cd vim to there, but just cd to there. LS, oh, no file. So what we're going to find is that it's in the directory above. I accidentally made it there. So then I just have to move pulse.py into pulse. And I can just use the single word pulse there because it'll identify it as a directory. But if you want it to be very explicit, you could go dot forward slash pulse forward slash pulse.py. So the Linux commands, because the Unix commands were that way, are flexible like this. You can be very explicit like that and it will work. Now that command that couldn't start before will work and we will probably be able to see the log being used. Okay, so open something as cd pulse vim pulse while true colon open is that contained that with a parameter as file handle? Oh, with open. I forgot the keyword with. Context management. Stupid me. Uh, vim pulse. The, con the keyword for the context manager is with open. So I have to add some 
self-induced mistake in this process. So now I can do the full, I can just test it here real quick. It'll stay locked up in the terminal because that's the way interpreters work. This is the interpreters, you know, executable, and this is the file being sent into the interpreter. So it's taking this file, which you see me working on in Vim, and is sending it into this executable file here. It doesn't have a .exe extension like you'll be used to seeing in DOS or Windows, but that's what it is here. Now if I control C, now I can vim forward slash tmp forward slash pulse knowing that's going to be there. Every five seconds it was writing out. So there's your pulse. It doesn't highlight in green here because it doesn't have my vimrc. This is a default install of vim that I'm using because I'm on a different machine than my usual everyday machine that you, you see me on over there. So anyhow, um, what we do here is, oh, revel in our success. So we control seed out of it. It's not running anymore, but we should be able to start that service with no problem. So that is simply um, ba -ba 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 -ba. system CTL start and command line completion should do it, but it didn't in that case. It's because I'm in the pulse directory like that. I'll just go with pulse like that. Oh yeah, it needs that sudo as usual. And now we should be able to systemctl on its own and find pulse running here somewhere. There it is, loaded and active. So now that we know it can be loaded and active, we will appease our curiosity that it's really actually there. So I'm going to do uh, cd slash tmp ls. There's always this really long thing there. Um, probably not good to be showing that to you. But anyway, we can remove the pulse.txt. And you can see the pulse.txt is not there anymore. Now we'll restart the service. Did I ever really stop the service? Well, at any rate, I'll demonstrate restarting it. We have the whole API of system CTL. So either way, that file is going to be recreated because it gets, you know, recreated with an append. So I can vim, well, I can ls it again, but there it is. You see it there. So I can uh, clear. Vim. Uh, pulse.txt and there it is uh, the file recreated and every five seconds a new line being added so we have a very uh, capable service there created in front of your eyes in those uh, we moments uh, yeah so there you have it. That's that's the ability to create 24-7 um, services. So if you wanted to change a service, like how often it wrote out to that, you could do cd slash etc slash system d slash system like that. ls, there's all your services. You could sudo vim pulse service and then change that um, Oh, yeah, no, it's not in this location. I was thinking restart seconds, but that's how often it checks to make sure it's running and restarts it if it's not. We actually want to go to cd forward slash github, oops, forward slash uh, pulse. Oh, yeah, it's not. To, uh, like that, it's like that. It needs a slash before it. Pulse, there's command line completion slash pulse. See, I, I say we shouldn't rely on, as it's not CD there, we want to just vim it. We want to pseudo vim it. So you can edit a file from anywhere you happen to be. And now, if we wanted to change that five seconds sleep to, you know, was it 1400? I don't know. It was like every. Uh, twice an hour. I think that was 14,000. 
<laughs> I'll just do it every 300 for the sake of testing right now. And say you wanted to get that new timing to start taking place, you would have the system CTL interface and you would say restart is what I want to do. Pulse. And oh. Oh, it's not retard, it's restart. Oh, and then you want to pseudo it, of course. So there we go. Uh, system with a pulse. And uh, on the next. Uh, go around we'll do something a little better than a pulse maybe an email sending out an email on every such and such so that you have uh, something coming to the outside world instead of written into a temporary file uh, on your drive on your, it's not even on your drive technically the slash TMP is usually a RAM location random access memory which means when the PC loses power that log file goes away, which is one of the reasons I chose that temp file location, temp directory location, because you don't have to worry about cleaning up after it. Um, anywho, think, think, think. Yeah, so the next steps are going to be probably sending an email on that times basis or possibly adding the screen program so the running of this can be monitored directly through a screen. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe, hit all those buttons.